Praise the Lord, and I'm glad that you have tuned in today, and we're going to have a great time uh, in the Word of God. I want to thank you again for tuning in, and I want to, we're going to get into something in just a moment. Just before we do, I want us to pray together, and then we'll get into some things. There's a couple of things I want to cover, and I think it's going to be a blessing to you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing presently, and for what you will do momentarily. I thank you for giving me utterance in the Holy Ghost that I may speak according to the perfect plan and will of God, and that no corrupt communication will proceed from my mouth, but rather that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearer. Thank you for hungry hearts and open minds to receive from you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit ministering to your people in a special way. I do now believe that I receive the fresh anointing to minister to your people according to your perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Listen, if you were with us on Sunday, then you know that God, it was a, such a powerful, powerful move of the Spirit of God. And before I get into some things I wanted to talk about, I wanted to uh, just touch on a couple of, you know, a few testimonies. You know, people made comments and they were receiving healing and the Spirit of God was moving in such a way. What we were experience, experiencing was a two manifestations of the Spirit, or gifts of the Spirit, and uh, one was word of knowledge and the other was gifts of healings. And word of knowledge, when that operates, it is it, a word of knowledge is a fragmentary part of the knowledge of God. That's like, like a word is a fragmentary part of a sentence. The, a word of knowledge is a fragmentary part of the knowledge of God. It is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God of things, uh, of certain facts in the lives of people, past or present. And he reveals certain things like what we saw happening. I was calling out different things because it was being revealed what the Lord was healing. And then uh, also gifts of healings operated along with it to bring the healing to people. And we had many, many, many uh, comments uh, far too many to try to name, you know, to uh, pull them all off. But I wanted to go over just a couple of them, just a few, I should say, um, that was going on while the, while the service was going, while I was ministering and praying for people and the Lord, uh, the gifts of the Spirit were in operation. I'll just uh, call out some of the things that, that was uh, comments that people made. I'm healed. Another, I'm healed of asthma. Another, thank you, Lord, for healing my back and knees. Hallelujah. His presence is here. I'm healed. No more acid reflux. Hearing restoration. Pain just left me. Thank you, Lord. My left knee was bothering me for about a week, but it is no longer. Thank you, Jesus. Knees, my God, I'm healed. I was waking up at night with the night terrors. That is one of the things that the Holy Spirit gave me. I was waking up at night with the night terrors. Another, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I got healing heat right now. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm healed of a heart murmur. I'm whole in Jesus' name. Healed of numbness in the feet. Hallelujah. Nightmares and muscle spasms. Right hand pain. Amen. Healed. Just took a deep breath without a coughing attack. Healed of sleeplessness. I shall sleep well. I'm healed from the numbness in both feet. I can bend, thank you, Jesus. The limp has gone. I receive it, my healing. My chest feels better, hallelujah. 
You called the condition concerning me, apostle. The powers resting on me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm at work, but my spirit man is doing cartwheels. These are just some of the comments and testimonies that people uh, wrote of while the healings were going on on Sunday. Praise God. And it was a, a tremendous blessing. And people really uh, got blessed through the word of God and through the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. And I want to encourage you, if you were one of those people, to walk in it. Continue to walk in uh, your healing. You know, not every, not every sickness or disease that comes, comes as a result of a, of a demon spirit. Uh, for instance, uh, now I know there are some who teach that, but I, I disagree with that. Because when I look at the ministry of Jesus, when there was a demon to deal with, he dealt with the demon. But there were other times he ministered to people and he didn't deal with a demon at all. And so uh, if there was a demon there, he would have dealt with it. But if he don't deal with it, it it's, that is not the cause. Now, Satan, I believe is behind sickness and disease either directly or indirectly. But many times it's indirect because it's not an a actual demon. I say uh, directly sometimes it's an actual spirit causing an issue. But in other times, indirectly because of the fall of Adam. And that's, that's what, what goes with that. However, when the Spirit of God moves, he may deal with something like that and cause things to happen um, by, like we had on Sunday. But, but also, we need to understand that there is a way for you and I to, to receive healing. And, and now we receive, many people receive through the gifts of the Spirit. And thank God for that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about receiving uh, healing for yourself, how you would receive um, you know, uh, if you prayed yourself, how do you re how do you receive the healing and all those things? However, uh, in in dealing with evil spirits, when it's a time, for instance, if there is an evil spirit where Jesus dealt with it, he said something about the characteristic of demons. He said, when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest, and he finds none, and he says to himself. I will go back to my house from whence I came. And he goes back to that house and he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. And then he goes and gets seven more spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter into that man. And that person is now in a far worse state than they were before. Now, the reason why I brought that up is that sometimes we experience what I call a counterattack. You know, I've received healing, and then after so many days or so, or so much time pass, here something comes again, the same symptoms and, and so forth. I call that a counterattack. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a demon, but it still sometimes tries. And certainly when it's a demon, it's going to try to come back to you. And we need to know what to do in such a case. But that's why I'm saying stay in your ground. Don't allow symptoms. I think we focus too much on how we're feeling. Don't allow your symptoms to dictate what you believe. Now we'll get back, we'll get into some of that a little bit in, in just a little bit. But I wanna deal with a, a, a question. Someone asked a question and I wanted to uh, deal with it pertaining to this coronavirus and what's going on and some of the things that people are doing, taking the precautions that we're taking as a result of being, you know, told stay home and this, that, and the other. And really the question was about the difference between a person doing something in faith and someone doing something in fear. For instance, staying at home. There's a difference between a person staying at home in obedience to what the authority said and staying at home because they're afraid something's going to happen to them. 
That's two different things. You can stay home in obedience and not be afraid. And you can stay home in obedience and be afraid. But if you are operating in fear, then you have to understand that your faith won't work. You cannot be controlled by fear. Now, it's not up to me to decide who is in fear or who's not necessarily. I can tell you from the scripture, I can teach you what the word of God says, but I'm not in the heart of people. But there's something else that I know and that you need to consider. One thing is, a, is for certain, not everyone is on the same level of faith. You know, uh, I get this question sometimes because I, I made a statement, I'm not going to get the coronavirus and I'm not going to get it. And I know some people think that's being arrogant. But that's not being arrogant. That's what my faith says. My faith in God says, I won't have it. What am I? And, and I get asked the question about, well, what about others? That you mean tell me all, all these other people and they'll tell me about ministers or bishops and this and that and they say they don't have they don't have faith well first of all it's not up to me to decide whether or not they have faith but I don't base my believing on somebody else's experience it does not matter A, another thing about it is to be honest with you not everybody's on the same level of faith you can have faith and yet it's weak faith it's not just about having faith. If your faith is weak, then that's, that's a whole different thing. I, I say all the time, if you can't lift 50 pounds, you surely can't lift 100. If you can't lift 50, you can't lift 100. Praise God. I was speaking to uh, one of my uh, sons in the faith, and he likes to go to the gym and so forth, and I asked him, you know, how much weight does he, he lift? And he asked me, he said, bench press? I said, yes. He said, bench press 405 pounds. And then squats 600 pounds. Now that's a thousand, <laughs> woo, five pounds. Are you kidding me? Now me, I'm not in no place where I can lift 400 pounds. But he also told me later, when he first went to the gym, he, he didn't, you know, he had difficulty with just the plates that you put on the bars. He couldn't lift a hundred pounds, but he continued going with it and continued and continued, and then he got stronger and stronger. That's exactly the way faith works. You start at a particular place and you get stronger and stronger. Some people, now hear me good, they, the problem is they're trying to believe and, and, and by the way, there's nothing in the scripture to teach us to try to believe. But this is really what's happening because they're endeavoring to believe God for something to push the 400 pounds and they've never lifted 100 pounds. They're trying to believe for something big when they've never exercised their faith on something small. If you, if every time you get a headache, if every time you get a headache, you run to the medicine cabinet and take something for it, you have never yet experienced healing without it. And if you haven't experienced healing without it, you don't know how to receive healing without the aid of the medicine. So now, if you have never even been able to believe God to heal you from a headache, what in the world are you going to do if some cancer came on you? What are you going to do when they start talking about coronavirus? Those who have never trusted God for healing outside of medicine now, I'm not talking about through the medicine outside of medicine, if you have never done anything like that outside of medicine, then you're not going to be able to do it at any other, uh, uh, when you need to. 
I, I, I think it's, it was um, uh, Smith Wigglesworth who said, if you wait till you need faith to get it, it's too late. It has to be developed at the time that you need it. This is why it's a lot of people, you know, they use faith like it's just something to get something from God. The only time they even think about faith is when it's trying to, when they're trying to get something from the Lord. But the scripture says the just shall live by faith. And that's what when Paul wrote about that, he was quoting another scripture which said in the Old Testament, which said the just shall live by his faith. So we that are born again, we are justified by faith. We're supposed to live our lives by faith, not just to get something when we're in need. And many of us do not live a life of faith. It's, it's true. I mean, born again, as, that's, as, that's as far as your faith takes you. You know you're going to heaven. You know you're born again. But as far as trusting God for anything, we, there's too many believers that do not trust God. I call believers in that they're born again. But they don't know the word. They don't trust God on anything. They have crutches that they lean on. If they don't have certain things, they can't be healed. They, you know, they can't trust God without this or that. I mean, they gotta see it. They gotta be able to see it. They have the mentality that seeing is believing. And all of these things are, are going on. Now, so a person who lives by faith and, and, has, and exercises their faith by trusting God for things, small things, little things, trust him, and then you'll see other things happen. Here's somebody never believed God for 50 cents above their salary. You've never been able to trust God for a 50 cent outside of your paycheck. And now suddenly you're going to believe God for $10,000. You're going to believe God for thousands of dollars because a need came. It's not going to work because your faith is not there. You can't lift the 400 pounds. Why? You haven't learned to lift the 100 yet. This is one of the reasons why you hear people claiming that receive healing and saying, I know I'm healed, the Lord healed. A lot of that are people speaking what they desire, but not the reality. And I'm not talking about you have to see it and feel it. No, I mean, how convinced are you? How convinced are you? How convinced are you about what you're saying? I often ask people when they I, I get so many requests to pray for people for healing and so forth. And, and, and you ask people, well, what do you want? Well, I want God to do such and so. What do you believe? Well, I believe God to do such and so. In reality, sometimes what their answer is, is really what they desire, but not where they actually are. Have you ever believed God for anything? Have you ever trusted the word of God and did something without some kind of crutch? You know, thank God for doctors and thank God for good doctors and especially thank God for saved doctors that love Jesus. Praise God for them. And if it wasn't for doctors, a whole lot more people would be in the grave. But let me help you understand something. If all of your faith is in what God does through them alone. Here's what the scripture said. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart departs from the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. In other words, he, he leans on flesh, but his heart departs from the Lord. You're, you're supposed to have a certain level of confidence, doctors and others who are going to help you in different ways. That's, that's not a problem. The problem is when you lean so on them and your heart goes away from God, that's where the problem is. So what is it that you believe? See now, some people believe 
but they believe up to what the doctors can do and what they, what they say they can do. But they don't believe past that. And this is why uh, once the doctor give them a diagnosis of something and let's say there's no cure, this is one of the reasons why people fall apart. They lose all hope because they feel like this, this is the end for me because there is no cure. There is nothing that they can do. This is the end. They never even consider that God can go beyond where they are, that God can go beyond the diagnosis, that God can go beyond the prognosis. They leave out the God factor. In fact, in some people's minds, the only way God works is through medical science. The only way God works. But I'm a testimony. I have, I, I'm a living testimony that that's not true. I'm a living testimony. Because when I was a baby, I was given up to die by the doctors. Now you stop and think about that for a moment. My mother, my grandmother, and my father all told me about this. But it was my grandmother especially that talked about it and that called, that, that told me what happened because she was the one involved. My mother and father was not really involved in it. My grandmother was. Now the doctors told my family to prepare for my death because there was nothing they could do. They didn't know what was wrong, but it's killing me. Whatever it is, I'm dying, but they don't know what it is. And do you know what? I have never, up to now, found out what it was. My mother never. My mother's gone to be with the Lord. My father's gone. My grandmother's gone. And never did they find out what was wrong because the doctors did not know. Maybe perhaps today they would know what it is or what it was, but they didn't know in that day. But yet I'm dying. So they're treating me with everything they have, and yet I'm dying. But a man of God prayed. My pastor used to say, man's extremity is God's opportunity. I like to say that man's extremity is God's opportunity. That, that means when, when man is gone, as far as he can go, God's just getting his boots on. He can go far beyond just the natural. And I'm tying all of this in because I'm going to show you something in a, mo in a minute. Because all this is still connected to people being afraid and in fear. In fear about this and in fear about that. And some of us believe certain things that others do not. Because they have not exercised their faith and it is not developed. They know the words to say. They know all the right words. But their faith is far below their mouth. They're saying something but they're not really there. And the, and, and the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Are you listening to me? So the, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If you say you believe and you make a statement like I did, then it ought to be that, you, that it comes out the way you're saying. If you actually believe it. Now, there are people who profess to be Christians who do not believe the Bible. They believe some of it. They don't believe it's the word of God. And therefore, they have a whole different attitude about it. Well, my grandmother, years before, had, had suffered with asthma, and the Lord healed her. And, and so in, the, in their church, and it was a little, a little storefront church in Brooklyn, New York, called Mason Temple Church of God in Christ. That church, as far as I understand, still exists today. But when I, I was there with the founding pastor, Elder Stephen Kelly, and this man of God 
called my grandmother and said, bring me the child. My grandmother said that she just wrapped me up in a little uh, bath towel. She said, you're so tiny. I just wrapped you up in a bath towel and took you to the church. She said it was, we were there, we were meeting for noonday prayer on, a, on Friday. Every Friday they would have prayer at noon. And she said, I, I, I went there and I carried you there. Her words, my, my grandmother's words, she said, nobody showed up but the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. She said, that's Elder Kelly, Mother Kelly, and me. And she said, when I got there, he took you out of my hands and walked up to the front and laid you on the offering table and pulled up a chair and sat down in her words and began to talk to God about you. Now, a part of what he said was, Lord, give me this child. And if you give him to me, since medical science has given him up, if you give him to me, I'll give him back to you like Hannah gave Samuel, that you might raise him up and use him for your glory. And my grandmother said, after a while, the Holy Ghost changed his prayer. These are her words. She said, the Holy Ghost changed his prayer. In other words, he changed from asking God to heal me and, and all of that to thanking God for my healing. I didn't look any different. Nothing had changed. That, that could be visible. There were no visible signs that anything happened. But in his heart, he knew that something happened. And he started praising God and thanking him. And then offered me to the Lord. And said, now that you've given them to me, I give them back to you. Raise them up and use them for your glory. That day, the power of God came down on me. I'm healed. I was healed that day. I'm still here because of that. Praise God. In a few years, I'm going to be 70 years old. That I'm still here. Still healed. Praise God. To God be the glory. I'm not on medication of any kind. To God be the glory. That don't mean I'm better than you. That doesn't mean I'm better than someone else or smarter or God loves me more, anything like that. It has to do with what I was taught to believe and what I do believe. Now, as a baby, I couldn't do any of the believing. It had to be done for me. But my grandmother instilled something in me. She said that Bible is right. That Bible is right. Praise God. She is still that in me. That Bible is right. Now, there are people who will not take certain scriptures literally. They want to put some kind of spiritual connotation to it. But the scripture says that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. He said that the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I believe that. I believe that just the same way I believe that Jesus rose from the dead after being in the grave for three days. I believe that that scripture is true. I believe that he has paid for my healing the same way I believe that he paid for me to be saved. I believe it. I'm convinced of it. Now here is what I do not do. I do not look at anyone else who gets sick, anyone else who dies, or any other thing to shape what I believe. That's their experience. That's not my experience. I don't know what they believe. I don't know. All I know is what I believe. And listen, when I say believe, what I'm fully persuaded of. I'm fully persuaded. I don't mean I kind of feel like I am fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. 
that what God said is true, period. I'm fully persuaded. Now, go back to this COVID-19. I made a statement and people might think I'm, I'm being arrogant, but no. I'm not being arrogant because I said I'm not going to get it. For one thing, I have no fear of getting it. I have no fear of it. I have no fear. I'm not sitting down feeding myself all this stuff they're giving out every day to put fear in me. That's why some of you and many people are so afraid. You sit down for hours watching them talk about the coronavirus and this and that and what it's done and what it's doing and five more people died, 10 more people died. Now we're up to 100, you know, and all of that. What does that do with you? What does that do for you? Somebody said, well, I need to know that. You need to know it because what? Now, for give you an example. I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm, I'm really asking a question. So you find out that X amount of more people died. How does that affect you personally? How does that affect you personally? See, I believe what Psalm 91 said. I believe a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. See, some people think it's foolish to believe something like that. You're going to believe something that, that was written thousands of years ago? Yes, I believe it. If it's the word of God, it's the word of God. I don't care how long it was written, how long ago it was written. If it's God's word, God said, I am the Lord and I change not. If I stop believing that, I'm in trouble. If I stop believing what he said, I'm in trouble. And many, even Christians, I can understand people that don't know the Lord. I understand their fears. I understand them being concerned. But I don't understand Christians acting no different than unbelievers. I don't understand Christians acting like the Bible is not the word of God. I don't understand that. I do not understand that. And I'm looked at by some as some weirdo or something or some arrogant somebody because I refuse to bow to fear. And I have the audacity to say I believe what the Bible says. Well, I'll take all the criticism you, criticism you can give out, but it's not gonna change what I believe. I'm not moved by what people think about me. I'm moved by what this Bible says about me and what God says about me. I trust the word of God. It said it, I believe it. For me, that settles it. God's word said it. I believe it. Not what about this? What about that? What about this person? And what about that person? Then here's what you need to do. Go to that person and ask them about what they believe. Ask them. I don't have anything to do with that. I don't have anything to do with anybody else but me. Now, in, in, in our church, I teach our people but I'm not responsible for what they do with what I teach. That's still on them. Some may believe, some may not. Some may be thoroughly convinced, and some may not be. You can't just do something because I do it. You need to understand why and what. That's what you need to understand and how. Why? what and how, why I believe it, what I believe and how. That's the, you need to understand that for yourself. I can give you the principles. I can give you biblical principles. I can give you scriptures that you can stand on. 
but how you get it is up to you or whether or not you receive is up to you and I'm telling you it's not up to God see a lot of people because this is how people are taught they have this idea that you pray and what and just leave it up to God whatever God decides then that's what you're going to get how well what are we going to do with the scripture in Mark 11 and 24 where Jesus said therefore I say to you what things whatever you desire when you pray Believe you receive them and you shall have them. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with the verse before that? That whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So I said, well, I know somebody, they were saying they're not going to get it, but they, and, and, and they got it anyway. Okay, and what did that got to do with the Bible? I mean, what does that have to do with the Bible? If they said they're not going to get it, and they got it, Jesus said, whoever said to the mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. So, perhaps they doubted in their heart. I don't know. I'm not them. I don't, I'm not their judge, and it doesn't matter. I can tell you what the Bible says. Now, let me go back again a little bit further to the, the, the question about being precautious and, you know, being in faith and is, is the same thing. Really, it has to do with what you're actually believing in your heart. If I, if I take steps and I'm in fear, see, now, now listen, fearful thoughts come to everybody, you, me. Your mama, and my mama, everybody. Fear, fear thoughts can come. But I like this saying I heard. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you don't have to let it build a nest in your hair. You can't stop a thought necessarily from coming to your mind, but you don't have to take hold of that thought. Jesus said, take no thought saying. You know, thoughts may come and thoughts may go, but thoughts not put into words or action die unborn. Did you hear what it said? So thoughts can go, come and go, but I don't have to embrace it. I don't have to accept it. I don't have to believe it. I'm so glad my grandmother did not go along with what the doctor said. Thank God for the doctor. But the doctor can only do what they know. But what do you do when you're in a situation where they have done everything that they can do? What do you do then? I'm going to tell you something. If that's where you, if all your faith is in what they can do, you're in trouble when they get to the end of what they can do. If that's all you, that, if that's all you can believe, what God can do through them you're in trouble as soon as you come up, they come up against something that they don't have a cure for. But Jesus is the cure to any sickness and any disease. He's the cure. He's the cure. Now, this is not a put down. I'm not judging anybody else or putting down somebody. Don't get upset because I'm, I'm just telling you how things work. I'm not talking about your friend or your family member or someone that may have died or anything like that. All of us have relatives that died. It happens. Death is a part of the life process. Eventually, we're going to all die. But that doesn't have anything to do with how things work. And what you believe goes a long way in how things turn out. Praise God. I mean, that's the truth about it. Now, I want to I read a scripture to you, and then I want to make a statement based on uh, the scripture. The, the scripture is in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And it reads, I'm going to start at verse 4 and read verses 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Listen, 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Isn't that interesting? That you can bring thoughts into obedience, into captivity. You can cast down thoughts and imaginations. You don't have to dwell on those things and think on those things. You don't have to. You can do something about it. You know, someone brought up something and, and uh, I thought it was, they made this statement, every thought, every thought has a life attached to it. Every thought has a life attached to it. And what you do with it will determine its effect on you. What you do with it, you can cast it down. Now you can say, for instance, you can say, Oh my God, oh Lord, I don't want to get this thing. Oh, I don't want to get this thing. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I don't want to get this thing. That don't sound like a lot of faith. That just sound like panic. Or you can say, I'm not getting it. Now, some people would not even be bold enough to say, I'm not going to get it. They would be afraid to say that. They would think that that's being presumptuous. And I'm not going to say that. How do I know what I'm going to get? I'm basing it on the Bible. A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. It shall not come nigh thee. He shall deliver thee from the noisome pestilence. COVID-19 is a pestilence. The scripture promises to deliver me from it. But the thing about it, the word of God and the will of God is not automatic. Just because God has a desire or will, it doesn't mean that it automatically happens. It doesn't. And let me tell you this while I'm telling you that, that there is a man side and a God side to everything we receive from him. I'm going to say it again. There is a man side and a God side to everything that we receive from him. God doesn't do the man side. Man doesn't do the God side. For instance, the, God, the man side is believe that you receive. The God side is you shall have. It's not up to me to make sure I have. It's up to me. It's up to me to make sure I believe that I receive it. I got to believe I got it. I believe I receive it. Not after I see something. Not after I can feel it. Not after it's come into contact with my physical senses. Listen to what the scripture says. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I think a better way of saying that is we walk by faith and not by our senses. Because when you're walking by faith, you can't be walking by your senses. And if you're walking by your senses, you're not walking by faith. That's, that's what the Bible says. We walk by faith and not by sight. There is a difference. We walk by faith and not by sight. When you're going by how you look, how you feel, and what this one said, and all, that's going by your senses. Are you listening? That's going by your senses. But we live by faith. Faith in God's word. Faith in God himself, faith in what he said he would do, faith in what he has done. It doesn't matter. It, don't be judging things based on what happened to someone else. What's that got to do with you and what you believe? A thousand fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. And by the way, don't let some person who claimed to be real deep and spiritual and all of that take you to the scripture and convince you that it means something else. That's another issue. That's another problem. There, you, there's not a person in this world 
that's going to change what I believe on healing. There's not a person in this world that's going to change what I believe about the Bible. None. You're not, it's not going to happen. I don't care who they are, what their name is, how many initials they have behind their name. None of that matters to me. I'm letting no one talk me out of it. This is what I believe. And by the way, if you think I'm missing it, then you pray for me. But leave me missing it because it's been working very well for me all these years. I believe what the Bible says, period. I'm not judging nobody else. I believe what the Bible says, and I'm going to have what the Bible says. And this is what I say all the time. If you do what the Bible says, like the Bible says, then you will have what the Bible says. It is not possible for you to do what the Word of God said, just like it said, do it, and not have. Now, is it possible for you to have faith and it, and it doesn't work? Yes. Yes. Why? Well, for one thing, check this out. The scripture says faith works by love. You know you can have faith and yet it won't work because your love, you got a love issue. You got faith so that you can move, remove mountains, but you don't have love. And with love comes forgiveness. Let's, let's just be real. And there are people who are walking around holding grudges for years. And there are even people who said, I forgave them. And that's what they'd like to believe. But they haven't forgiven it. Because they still talk about what happened. They still get angry when they talk about what happened. They still, you know, they're still in a tizzy about it. And sometimes years and years and years pass. You haven't, you haven't, you know, you haven't received anything. You know, in, in Mark 11, we always stop at verse 24 because it says, and um, what things ever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. But if you go to verse 25, it says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive your sins or your trespasses. And so there are different things. I could, I could talk to you for weeks about different reasons why people fail to receive certain things. But if with, with all things being equal, Everything was done like the Bible says. I'm walking in love. I'm not holding grudges. My faith is alive. My faith is working. I'm doing what he said like he said. There's no way that can happen. And I don't receive. It can't happen. I don't care who tells you they will believe in God, but. <laughs> I don't care who tells you that. Doesn't matter who tells you that. Because, you know, people, when things don't work out the way they claim that they were believing, they have to give you some kind of good reason why it happened to them. They got to give you some excuse of why it happened. As opposed to just fess up and say, I missed it somewhere. If ever I seek God to pray it to receive something and it's not working or it doesn't work or doesn't come... I don't assume, you know, God must didn't want me to have that. I guess it wasn't his will. No, 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 no. Instead of me doing that, you know what I do? I say, okay, Lord, I missed it somewhere. Where did I miss it? Where did I miss? Because I know God didn't miss. His word promises me something. He didn't, he didn't miss. So I had to be the one to miss. I miss. Where did I miss? Examine myself. I have done this with other people. Sit down with them because they've been praying for healing. They've been had their hands laid on them so much about to grow a bald spot from where hands been laid on them. But they still haven't received anything. If you can sit down with such a person, and I've done this one-on-one, -on -one, and get past all the clutter, get past the, yes, I did that, 
Yes, I know. Yeah, you're right. I understand. I did that. Because I have people do that all the time. Everything you tell them to do, they say, I, I did that. Well, some, something's wrong. But when you get past all of that, and when you get people, I ask people, just be brutally honest with me. I don't want, I don't want to hear your faith confession. I, want, when I, I ask you how you feel. I want to know how do you feel. If I ask you, are you have, do you have any fear? I want you to tell me, yes, I'm afraid. So that we can address the fear. Because you're trying to operate in faith while you got fear in you, and it's not going to work. But people just won't. Sometimes people are not honest. I think sometimes they're not honest with themselves. They're saying they believe in something, but they're, they're not. If you're upset about it, you're not in faith about it. If you're crying and, 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 and falling out about it, you're not in faith about it. Don't tell me you believe in God, you trust God, that it, and you all down on the floor crying, boo-hoo, and concerned. And you're, not, you're not in faith about it. But that, that's okay. You can get in faith about it. You can, you can find what the Word of God says. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you may not be where you ought to be, but you can get there. No one's, there's no one who started off there. You have to, you have to get there. But you're not going to get there by trying to defend yourself and getting upset because somebody tells you the truth. So if, if I'm locking every door and hiding in the closet and all that and, and so forth, is it out of precaution or is it out of my fear? That's for the person to decide. But I will tell you this. There are people that are in fear and just saying they're being precautious. That's, that is true. They're hiding behind taking precautions. But really, they're in fear. But that's something you have to come to grips with about, uh, uh, about with yourself. You got to come to grips with that uh, with yourself. Where, what do I actually believe? Many, many people don't have a clue about where they are in faith. Because they never used it. And they don't use it. For some of us to believe, like I'm talking about believing, to some people, even Christians, there's something wrong with you. You're, you're crazy. You got your head in the sand. You don't believe in reality. You're in denial. It's all those things. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that my grandmother believed God. I'm so glad that Elder Kelly and Mother Kelly believed God. I'm so glad that this man said, bring me this child. Praise God. I'm so glad that he had the audacity to go by the scripture. He heard all the negative report. He heard what was going to happen. They all got the report. They all got the prognosis. How is it that it turned around? What turned it around? Somebody prayed in faith. There's a difference between praying, believing something, and praying out of pure desperation and fear. And those who pray out of desperation and fear are looking for God somehow to feel sorry for them. And, oh, Lord, please have mercy on me and this kind of thing. But they don't believe it. And if that's where you are, that's not a good place to be. Make up in your mind you're going to develop your faith. Make it up in your mind. Now, I, I've gone over quite a bit, and I, I didn't get into some of the things I want to get into. So I'm going to wait and get into that next week by the grace of God. But, but while I'm here, I thank God for utterance. 
the Lord wanted me to go this way. Don't be in fear. Don't be in a panic. I told you weeks ago when these things came out, I asked the Lord, what word would you have me to give your people? And the Holy Spirit said to me, don't panic. Don't panic. You know, men of God and women of God and people of God have died. And if they are of God and they died, one thing about it, they are far better off than you and I. But don't allow their death or them getting sick to affect what you believe. I, I, I say it all the time. I don't care who died. If I died, I would want my church and my family to believe the word of God. I could miss, but God cannot. Wouldn't matter. You don't base what you believe on what happened to somebody else. No, you don't. That's like you can't base it on that. That's what, you can't base it on that. Praise God. And no, I'm not dying. I got work to do. Hallelujah. I got work to do. How do you know? Because the Lord told me. By His Spirit, I got work to do. Praise God. I haven't even reached 70 yet. Amen. I believe there's another scripture. The days of man, three score years and ten. And by, by the way, said, and if by reason of strength they be four score. <laughs> so the minimum is 70. The minimum. That's what my faith says. I'm not your judge. I'm not your God. I don't make your decisions. This is what I believe. What I believe. And so when people ask me, then I tell them what I believe from the scripture. With the stripes I am healed. That's what I believe. Now, does things come against me? Hurry up and believe they do. I have things come against me at different times. What do I do? I do the same thing I tell everybody else to do. I stand on the word of God. I say what the word says. And sometimes it's a fight. Sometimes things come on you and it don't disappear right away. No. But if you focus on how long it's taking, you're going to lose. You have to have the idea, and we'll get into this perhaps more next time, but you have to have the understanding of this. God's word is true, and he can't lie. He can't miss. So if he says, I'm healed, then the sickness is the lie. The disease is the lie. The symptom is the lie. And so when it's pressing against me, and I'm saying, no, 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 I don't accept that. I reject that. I renounce that. I say no sickness or disease or premature death or any symptom associated with it has any right in my body. That don't mean it won't be in your body, but it has no right to be in my body. Therefore, I renounce it. I resist it. I reject it. I command it to go, seen or unseen. Known or unknown, felt or not felt, raise this Bible, raise the word of God above your circumstance, above your sickness, above your disease, or I should say it a different way, above the disease or sickness you suffer with, if not yours, don't belong to you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the holy word of God. I asked you earlier for utterance in the Holy Ghost. 
I thank you for giving it to me. I know that people were ministered to, were enlightened through this word today. Thank you that I had a testimony of healing. How I praise you and give you glory. Thank you for the people out there receiving healing. And there's always other people and new people. And so I like to always pray for them. I pray for these that are listening and watching. I pray that you stretch forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders will be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. Father, as I hold my hands, I, I, I hold my hands up and I say in the name of Jesus that the healing power of God is being released to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that's watching right now. Thank you for healing them in the name of Jesus. Pain, leave that body in the name of Jesus. I come against every foul, unclean spirit causing sickness or disease in the bodies of the, those who are listening. And I say, you foul devil, you foul spirit of infirmity, loose that man and that woman. Loose that boy and that girl in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, the Lord is healing. The Lord is touching people right now. Healing is flowing like a stream. Oh, hallelujah. Reach out by faith. Lift your hands and thank him. Don't wait to feel better. Thank God for these testimonies of people that got started feeling different immediately. Don't, don't wait on that. Don't concern yourself with that. If you do, fine. Praise God. But if you don't, be as convinced that the healing is yours as you would be if you had it that moment. In Jesus' name. As I close, I want to tell you something the Lord sh shared with me many, many years ago. I didn't, I didn't know a lot about faith or anything. I was just starting to learn about it. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. You know he does speak. He, he, he says that my sheep hear my voice. Now listen, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said these words, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you about faith. He went on to say, and I know it was the Lord, but he said, whenever you're believing me for something, see, I never, I, remember now, I didn't know much at all. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me about it. He said, whenever you're believing me for something, you must see through the eyes of faith, I never heard that expression before. You must see through the eyes of faith yourself having it. And then you must begin to rejoice in the same manner that you would rejoice if you actually had it in your hand. Once I learned that, I live by that. If I pray, I believe I receive, I don't have to see anything for. I start rejoicing and acting like I already got it. That's what you do. Believe you got it and then you'll get it. If you're here today, if you're listening, watching, and you've not come to a saving knowledge of Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do so right now. Many people are struggling at this very moment. Some are in fear. They don't know what's going to happen, what's coming to the world. You know, Jesus predicted that a time would come that men's hearts would fail them for fear of things coming on the earth. Right now, people are fearing and hearts are failing. Right now, over this COVID-19. But I want to tell you that the Prince of Peace wants to give you his peace. You can be at peace in the midst of the storm. You can be at peace. And I want you to know that Jesus died so that you can be at peace. Now 
and after this, when you're no longer here. Here's what I want you to do. I want you, if you want to be saved, if you want that peace, right where you are, just say with me, oh God, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I also believe that you raised him from the dead so that I can be saved. I receive the Lord Jesus as my Savior, as my Lord, as my only hope of eternal life. Right now, by faith, I pass from death to life and I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you meant it from your heart, it's that simple. Praise God and welcome to the family of God. I want to encourage you to give, to help us out. All of our people, God bless you, full gospel. You know what to do. You know how to give your gifts through PayPal and through Givelify. Give as unto the Lord. Give and it shall be given unto you. You know that. The bills keep rolling in, even if we're not in the building. The bills keep rolling in. If you're a member of some other church, I encourage you to support your church. If you have anything extra, you can help us out as well. God bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday in Jesus' name.